I like streaming, cause streaming can make you mine. I like streaming. Oh, streams in the desert. See what glasses will do to you? Man, you know, every time I get a little pride in me, I got the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong situation. Speaking of the situation. <laughs> Speaking of flakes. You have any on you? <laughs> Are you a flake? Am I? You know, God, since you love the world, are we frosted flakes, or are we just flakes? What kind of flake are you? Oh, sorry, you're not a flake. You're milk toast. <laughs> you know, God loves us so much that sometimes we forget just how much that he's done for us that I think we get carried away with what we think we ought to do for him as opposed to just be with him. <laughs> I mean, one of the biggest shocks some of the people that I know had was, there was a, first it used to be that, you know, everybody that looked at Jesus saw blonde hair and blue eyes. That was kind of weird. Then we'd always see the sacred heart of Jesus, you know, it's like, that was kind of weird too. But then after a while, we got to see this kind of hippie, you know, stoner, kind of zigzag man Jesus. That was kind of strange. But then after a while, you know, we got to this place of uh, seeing Jesus, like, laughing. And you know, the funny thing was, is that when I saw the laughing Jesus, it was uncomfortable. <laughs> It looked a little weird to me, you know, and now that we've had the barking Christian, we've had the rolling Christian, and we've had the laughing Christian, those are a little weird for me. I'm not saying you can't do that. You really want to do that. Go ahead. <laughs> you can bark. <laughs> you can bite. <laughs> Heck, I don't know. You could throw some gold dust in the air. Oh no, don't go there. <laughs> you can do what you want to do, sort of. But you see, comfort zones are funny kind of things. When we were um, holy, we put a blanket over our head and we called it a talis and we tied little knots in it and then we said, you know, these knots don't mean that we're knotted, but guess what? <laughs> if it kind of reminds you of being knotted up in life, you know, then I guess these zizis are really what it is because if you look at a messianic today, he's got some knots on. <laughs> Oi, they, they've got knots, they've got zizis, they've got princes, they've got, you know, what are they doing, Lord? Don't they know? Mm, yeah. Oh well. If that's what turns you on, you know, or turns you to God, then I guess, okay, have it your way. Do what you will today, in your own way. But God loves you. And so, here is the church, and here is the steeple, open the doors to all the people. But as <laughs> As wide and varied as they are, only the love of God could cause us, as it's shed abroad in our hearts, to bind us together in love based upon what Jesus has done. Because Jesus will let you do quite a bit. You know, I mean, if, if you really got a handle on the book of Revelation, you know, where it says, Jesus to the letters to the seven churches, to the seven churches, this is me, I am the Alpha Omega, and this I'm that, I'm everything else, and I'm going to, and I'm going to tell you what I like and what I don't like. This I like, 
He said, don't lie. I don't think so. I think I in charge, you're not. You do this, you okay, you overcome. And then he goes down to the next one. He said, like, he said, don't lie. You do this, you do that, we okay. But all seven of them were different. Some of them were pretty wacko. <laughs> hmm, am I wacko? Maybe. Some of them have some pretty weird theologies. That Jezebel. We don't got the devil. Oh, wait a minute, that's the other church. They know where the devil is. <laughs> they got the devil in the house. We got Jezebel. <sighs> Jezebel. 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 We gonna get that Jezebel. But they were all Christian. You see, Jesus walked in the midst of all of them. Now he warned them that he might remove their candlestick, you know, their candelabra, their menorah. But at the time he wrote it, they were all together, all seven, seventh summer completion, the complete church. Not only as it was, not only as it would be through time, but as it is today. Do, 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 do. That means that there are seven types, and which church are you? I think you better do whatever it says to do. But then again, there's an easier way. Because you see, there's always something kind of interesting about church and the bride. Church and the bride. Church. John wasn't in church. He was with the Lord. I get it. Maybe we should just stick with the Lord and let Him lead us. So John went to heaven and he got a chance to see all the letters to seven churches and he was like, you know, witnessing all these things. So if he's over here and the church is over here, ooh, what a concept. He's with Jesus. Where do you want to be today? Where do you want to go? May I say, who do you want to be like? It's Elvis, baby. <laughs> Elvis is not in heaven or in the house. You never know. I'd like to think he's in heaven. I really doubt it. <laughs> and it's sad to say, he may be a perfect example of why some people go to hell. But, I am persuaded of better things for you, my beloved brethren. Why? Because we like streaming. I mean, streams in the desert. Because streaming can make you his. <laughs> And in streams in the desert, if we're his, we walk by faith, not by appearance. But I like my glasses. They're bifocal. <laughs> by faith, not appearance. God never wants us to look at our feelings. Self may want us to look, and Satan may want us to. But God wants us to face facts, not feelings. The facts of Jesus and of his finished and perfect work to us. Because it is his work and not our own. When we face these precious facts and believe them because God says they are facts, God will take care of our feelings. Faith. <laughs> Haven't you seen the choo-choo's? The choo-choo's, you know, where they show the little train, you know, the locomotive, you know, and it's like, faith. And then they show behind it, you know, the next car, fat. The fat beats faith. And then the last car, the caboose, feeling. Feeling. Because feelings can make you mad. But the reality is, is that most people are running on feelings. 
they have put the feelings right there next to the faith, you know, and they put the feelings and the faith and they put the faith and the feelings, you know, and they get together and they put faith feelings together and they got a faith feeling hybrid, which sounds like a pretty good car, you know, after all, we are green, aren't we? Well, a lot of Christianity today is kind of green that way, you know, they're kind of young in the faith or they're kind of green, so they're trying to save something by making it feeling and faith. You know, faith feeling, feeling faith. You know, we have faith to feel, and we have the feeling to faith. You know, so we can have faith to feel what we feel. But facts we're a little skimpy on. You know, we kind of like to make the facts fit our feelings. And we like to make the facts fit our faith. We like to stick with faith first. And feelings next. And facts will kind of make them fit in when we need to. It's a hybrid. You ever driven a V8? <laughs> when you put the pedal to the metal, it ain't a hybrid. <laughs> I think you don't want the hybrid, but you want the pure Word of God. So, faith, facts, and feelings. We don't go by feelings. We put our faith in the facts. Back-based feelings? Think about it. When we face these precious facts and believe them because God says they are facts, God will take care of our feelings. God never gives feelings to enable us to trust Him. God never gives feelings to encourage us to trust Him. God never gives feelings to show us that we have already and utterly trusted Him. In fact, God says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. God gives feeling only when he sees we trust him apart from all feeling, resting on his own word and not on his own faithfulness to his promise. Ooh! Ouch! Wait a minute. You mean God gives feeling when we don't just trust in a promise and we say, I'm putting my faith in that promise and I'm signing my name to it, my check, and by golly, I'm going to have it because that's what it says, you know, to do, and I can go ahead and put my faith there because I signed my name right to that little promise of God and I'm going to get it, irregardless of what God's will is today, because after all, my faith signs the checkbook of my promise, so I have a faith promise checkbook and then I get it, got it, it ain't good. <laughs> But isn't that what Spurgeon said? Not really. Isn't that what Murray said? Not really. If you get it, you'll figure out that the relationship of God handing you His promise personally is the difference between signing my name to it with my faith or signing my name to it by impersonating someone else's signature because I think the promise on it says in Jesus name I can't sign my name to it I can't put there Michael James Stone and say I got that promise because it's mine but I gotta sign Jesus said so I don't know if I like that I'm pretty good at imitating Jesus his signature in his name <gasps> uh oh it's one of those haven't I done all those things in your name Lord routines no, it's not. But, <laughs> if you're claiming it, and you're naming it, <laughs> and you're signing his name to it, yeah, I'd be very careful what his will is. <laughs> it might surprise you. Seems like there's a little scripture that says, Today, if you hear his voice, Lord, Lord, I can't hear you. Really, God, speak to me, please. Never until then can the feeling which is born from God possibly come, and God will give the feeling in such a measure and at such a time as His love sees best for each individual case as He chooses. We must choose between facing toward our feelings and facing towards God's facts. Our feelings may be as uncertain as the sea or the sifting sands. 
and shifting circumstances. But God's facts are as certain as the rock of ages, even Jesus himself, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I can't help but trust in the Lord with all my heart because I don't lean on my own understanding because my own understanding could blow the doors off most people. <laughs> the way I understand things is way out there because it's sci-fi based. I actually think of God as being God, literal, you know, like really God, really literal, and God can do anything he wants to because he's not limited by his word, his promise, or in his scriptures. I literally take God literal. <laughs> That's why I use the word God. I mean it. But that's leaning in my understanding. Because, then again, on the opposite side of the coin, he could limit himself, since he's God, and if he wants to, and if he says so, and if he does, and he chooses to. Drax, God, how am I going to make you bigger than that, and lesser than that, unless I give you all of that, and make it all of that? By trusting in the Lord with all your heart. Leaning not in your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledging Him. I like to be directed by Him. He seems to know what He's doing. And you know what? The choice is yours. Let God lead. Give Him control for a change. You just might like it. I do.